Welcome to the Our Dad Stamps YouTube channel. My name's Pete West, and like a lot of people my age, I started collecting stamps as a child, encouraged by my father who was an avid collector. 20 years ago I inherited his collection, and at the same time I also inherited my wife's dad's collection. Since then I've been buying and selling stamps through my online stores at Del Camp and eBay under the name Our Dad Stamps and this has allowed me to grow the collection into what you see behind me. And now I want to share my experiences with you by producing regular video podcasts with stories about stamps and stamp collecting. I hope you enjoy them and if you do please don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to receive regular updates on new content. Happy New Year from Our Dad Stamps and welcome to the new format video podcast. For those of you listening on Anchor or any one of their platforms, these podcasts are now available on YouTube with visual content to enhance your listening pleasure. So if you want to watch what we're talking about, then head on over to YouTube, search for Our Dad Stamps or click on the link in the description. Uh, I'm going to start the new year with what I hope will be a, a regular feature, and that's looking at stamps in my collection. I'm going to start off with a, a set of stamps that I've been fascinated with since they first came out. And they are Malta's definitive set that were issued in January 1965 to celebrate the independence from Great Britain. And the reason I'm fascinated by them, so much so that I've actually got a whole album dedicated to this one set, is that there are so many errors in the set, and most of them are reasonably priced. So I've been able to mount up quite a, a decent collection uh, without a huge outlay. The set was issued on the 7th of January 1965, and there were 19 stamps initially. Nine small format stamps, ranging from a halfpenny to sixpence, and then ten of the larger format ones, which covered prices from eightpence up to a pound. And then later in August 1970, two more values were added because of changes in the postal rate, and there was a small format fivepence and a large format tenpence. These stamps were produced by Harrison's and Sons in in photogravure. And Harrison's and Sons were, were a reputable uh, printing company. So it is strange that so many errors were allowed out into the open market. I was actually living in Malta at the time that the set was issued. And even then, I remember from almost the day the stamps were issued, stories going round of people being able to buy errors over the counter at the post offices. And so naturally that piqued my interest. At that time, as a nine-year-old, I didn't have the resources to go down to the post office to buy loads and loads of stamps on the off chance I might get one with an error in it. But as time's gone by, as I've just said, I've managed to build a reasonable collection. So uh, I'm making up for lost time now. As I said, there were 21 stamps. And out of those 21 stamps, there were only two listed in Stanley Gibbons' catalogue without errors. And one of those, I have a copy with a major uh, colour shift. So in actual fact, there really is only one stamp that, out of a set of 21 that has no errors in it at all, which I find quite amazing. And that's the two and six stamp. But if you know differently, I'd love to hear from you. So let's have a look into the reasons why there were so many errors from, from such, such a reputable company. One of the main reasons was actually the design. The stamps were designed by Emvin Cremona. Emvin, short for Emmanuel Vincent Cremona, was, was a well-known and well-established Maltese designer of stamps. In fact, he designed virtually all the stamps from Malta in the 1960s. And he produced some quite complicated designs for this set of stamps, which involved several colours and this meant several print runs were needed 
for each stamp. And in a lot of cases, it was imperative that the print runs were done in the correct order in order to produce the right shade of colour on the stamp. So it was a fairly complicated process. The second reason is that all these stamps were produced without any borders around them. Now that does happen on occasions, but it's, it's not a normal process. Normally there's a white border around the edge of a stamp, which means when you come to perforate the stamps, it's fairly obvious if it's misaligned. However, on these stamps, with no borders on them at all, there were quite a few perforation errors that were allowed to go through. In some cases minor, but they're still errors and still make it interesting to collect. And a third reason, and this is purely my personal thought, just before these stamps were, were released, Harrison's produced a, a presentation pack for the Maltese authorities, showing what they were capable of. And in that presentation pack, they write that they have just built an extensive new production plant for processing these sort of stamps. So my guess is that because the production plant was brand new, it probably took a while for the operators to get used to it. And it's quite possible that mistakes were made at that time. As I said, that is purely my point of view, but that may also have contributed to the number of errors. The next question, of course, is, so, okay, we can understand why these errors occurred, but why weren't they picked up in the checking process? You know, these stamps are checked firstly at the printers, then when they're sent through to the Maltese post office authorities, they're checked again. Then when they arrive at the actual post office, they should be checked a third time. And finally, when the clerk hands over the stamps at the counter, they would have a look at them as well and are supposed to remove any defect stamps. So surely all these errors would have been picked up at some point along the way. And I think there's a couple of answers to that. One is the designs on the stamps, as I've said before, were very complex. And in some cases, one colour run produced a very small piece of colour on the middle of the stamp. And it would have been quite easy to miss that colour. There are 15 different stamps out of the 21 which have an error where the gold is missing. And on many of the stamps, the printing of the gold required two separate runs, one to print the gold border and one to print the gold in the centre. So when you're checking and you notice the gold border's there, or the traffic light for gold is there, you would not naturally assume that the other gold is there, maybe. So maybe that's another reason why these things got missed. And also, when you look at the stamps, sometimes it doesn't show up particularly well, in, depending on the light. So... It is possible that these were genuinely missed. A second reason, and maybe a more spurious reason, is there are stories where people were able to buy varieties and errors from under the counter at post offices. So it seems that some unscrupulous clerks were holding back ones that they knew were mistakes or varieties and making some money out of them. Not supposed to happen, but... Uh, I'm sure these things do. So let's have a look at some of the errors in detail. As I said, there are, there are so many errors, it would be impossible for me here to list every one. But just some of the things to look out for. As I've just said, the gold colouring being omitted is the most common error. It occurs on 15 out of the 21 stamps. On the large format stamps, there was a a frame either side of a centre design. It was a grey frame with a gold pattern over the top and the queen's head on one side and the value on the other side. That gold frame was printed on a separate run from the centre design. And on virtually all of them, you can pick up stamps with the gold of the frame omitted or the gold of the centre omitted. I don't believe there are any where both are omitted. If there is one, I should imagine that's worth quite a lot of money. But the framework, because it's gold on a mid-grey colour, it can be missed reasonably easily. And the central design, in some cases, it's just a small word written in gold. So again, that is possible to be missed. So two things to look out for there. On the smaller format, the gold generally makes up just part of the, of the overall pattern. By carefully looking, you should be able to spot the difference. 
Another mistake on several stamps is the silver emitted. In fact, uh, missing colours is by far and above the most common error on these stamps. Um, the silver being emitted is mostly on the on the small format stamps below the sixpenny one, and also in a couple of cases white. On the halfpenny and the penny stamp, the white value or white writing is omitted. And the halfpenny stamp is quite interesting because the word Malta is printed in in a pink colour, and there's many varieties where the pink is printed twice. The halfpenny value is printed in white, although it looks a silvery colour because it's white over the top of the background. That also has several errors where it's printed twice. Mostly, almost coincidentally, but in some cases there's a big and obvious gap between the, the two printings. There are so many varieties where the halfpenny or the malta is printed twice that people have begun to think that maybe they were all printed twice to get a deeper colour, but it's only the ones that weren't lined up quite correctly that have been noticed. That's an interesting point and one that maybe needs to be looked into a bit further, but uh, there are an awful lot of printed twice errors on the halfpenny stamp, so something to look out for. One of the big common error, and generally these are not listed in Stanley Gibbons catalogue at all, and that is colour shifts where on the second print or third print, the paper wasn't quite lined up correctly. So that particular color isn't quite in the right place. Now, if it's a minor shift, it really doesn't make an awful lot of difference. And these do happen quite frequently and don't have any significant value unless you're a specialist collector. But some major shifts, and we're talking about you know three or four millimeter shifts or more than that, can have a dramatic effect on how the stamp looks. And there are an awful lot of these visible on, on this set of stamps as well. As I said, these are not listed in Stanley Gibbons catalogue. So they do tend to be overlooked to a certain extent, but are certainly interesting and certainly well worth looking out for. I have several of, of the major colour shifts and it makes an interesting look on some of the stamps. Another error, that is fairly common that I've already touched on is, is the perforations. There are quite a few stamps where the perforation is misaligned and that often happens with all stamps. But on these more seem to have got through, as I said before, because there were no borders on the stamp. So it was more difficult to pick up. One other thing to look out for is what's termed minor constant errors. And these are things which occur on every sheet in a certain place where there's a fault in the printing block or the printing block has been retouched, or something has broken. And I've actually found one of these in, in my set that I didn't realise I had until I started researching for this particular podcast. And I was looking at my stamps more closely and, and deciding which ones I wanted to, to show and which ones I didn't. And I discovered on the two shilling stamp that there is what appears to be water running down the steps of the Gozo Council offices. In John Trory's specialised catalogue of Malta, it mentions the two shilling stamp having a line across the doorstep. And I'm not sure whether the stamp I found is the one referred to there or whether it's a different error. And it's something I'm still trying to find out at the moment. But if anybody out there knows the answer to that, Perhaps you could drop me a message or, or make a comment that would be most useful. Uh, but it just shows you that having collected this set for years, I'm still finding out things that I didn't know about and still discovering new, new varieties and new errors. So it makes it really interesting uh, what you can come across. One other thing I've realised as well from making this podcast is... These stamps were overprinted in decimal currency in 1972, uh, a few of them. And on those overprinted stamps, it is possible to find some with the errors that, that we've just mentioned. Now, I've never collected those because my Maltese collection stops at when decimalization comes into force. But it set me thinking that I'm going to start looking at the overprints as well and include those as part of the set. So it's given me something else to, to look for. Well, I hope you found that interesting. And if you have and want to look a bit further, 
I've just mentioned there's a John Trory specialised catalogue of Malta. It's a good source of information. I believe it's out of print now, but you can certainly still pick up copies. I've seen them on eBay and probably other places. So it's certainly worth digging out if this is something that interests you. Also, the, the Malta Study Circle. I'm a member of the Malta Study Circle, which looks at all things Malta. And I've managed to get a lot of information from members and from their reference libraries and, and study papers. So, again, if you're interested in multi stamps or particularly interested in this set, then look up the Multi Study Circle and become a member. Their web address is www.multastudycircle.net. The following is a short video of my collection. And as you can see, it starts with first day covers of the original 19 stamps. To get all 19 on one cover was pretty nigh on impossible. But this one is about as, as good as it gets up to the two and six value. And then a couple more. I don't yet have the, the really high values, five, 10 a shilling and a pound, uh, but hopefully they will come. They also produced booklets. There were four separate booklets and each of the booklets has the stamps in two different orientations. Uh, I've managed to get all except for the booklet number one in both orientations, but hopefully again, that will arrive shortly. Then we start with a complete set in uh, blocks of four. Most of these are corner blocks of four. Uh, and in some cases, imprint blocks. These are just the, the standard stamps. There's no errors or varieties in this, this lot. And they are quite easy to come by, uh, not necessarily cheap, but in blocks of four, you, you can readily um, acquire the whole set. I then listed all the different varieties and have gone through each value showing varieties. As you can see, I've got the half P in a full sheet, uh, or the halfpenny, sorry, not half P. And then quite a few varieties. As I said, the Malta printed twice and the halfpenny printed twice is quite a common variety. And as you can see, also, some of these are in blocks. Another full sheet of the penny stamp. And a few variations. At the moment, I have none with the colours missing. This is the one that's not listed in Gibbons, but it's a big shift of the black on the penny halfpenny. Sheet of the Tupney stamp with a few variations and the gold omitted stamp on the second row. The two and a half piece stamp with just one variety, which is the missing gold. A full sheet of the Thropney stamp. And again, lots of varieties, including quite a few misperforations. And the silver omitted. The 4P has quite a few shifts of colour um, and also the silver emitted, the Knights of Malta emitted on the top stamp. The 4.5P has one variation where the Maltese Navy is on the right. Uh, the 5 pence has, at the moment, I don't have the fortifications missing variety. The 6P with a few missing colours. The eight pence again with the gold missing the frame and the centre. The ten p without the variation, which is is the centre gold missing. The shilling with the gold missing, and some colour shifts. More gold missing, as I said in my description, the gold missing is is probably the most common error of all the stamps. Um, 
The two shielding is interesting with the green color shift and also uh, the stain on the step that I mentioned. The two and six, the only one with no errors in it at all. Three shielding with gold missing and also lots of shifts of the frame. The five shilling and the ten shilling, I at the moment do not have any of the variations. And finally, the pound variation with the pink omitted. It's quite difficult to see the pink omitted variation, but it is there. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and see you again next week on another Our Dad Stamps podcast. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to get regular updates on new content. You can also visit my online shops at eBay and Delcamp selling stamps and philatelic items by clicking the link below.